In this tutorial, we're gonna build on previous tutorials and create a logon page where the user can enter in the correct information and log on, or if they enter in the incorrect credentials, it asks you that you're required to log on. This process requires us to submit information through an SQL query to a MySQL database. If a record is returned, in other words, the username and password match, then we're able to capture this in a session flag and then change our interaction with the user. So let's get underway. So let's start by having a look at our index page. What we want to do in the index page is we want to actually take this include logon PHP out of here. Now by doing that, we can actually remove it and make a slight change to our web page. So we're just going to open up the PHP tag again. And we're going to include it here. This way we can notify the user if they do need to log on. Also, what we're going to do is on the log on page, we're just going to change please log on to log on. Now we're just going to save this and run this page now. You'll notice on the refresh, there's a slight log on but you're still required to log on to the site. Now what we'd like to do also is change this flag. We need to be able to turn this on and off. Currently under our global variables, we actually had the flag set to zero. So every time we come into the page, this flag will be set to zero. And we don't really want that to occur because once they do log on, this line of code will actually log us off. So we're gonna use a little if statement. So we're gonna use an if statement that allows us to log on and also the else clause if they already have logged on. And what we're gonna have a look at is well, if the session has started and to find that out, we can go is set and we wanna know if something is set because if we started the session, we can check to see if logged in actually exists. So we can look into our session. We can look at logged in and if that exists, then the session is going to be equal to one that they have logged on. And if it doesn't exist, then it's going to be set to zero for the first log on. We just need to correct and make sure we finish all our brackets correctly. Then we can save and run this. When the page is refreshed, you notice there's no change in it. However, if we actually change the flag now to be logged in, now if the user is logged in, When the page is now refreshed, you'll notice that the lines disappeared asking them to log in. So now we have a little flag system where we can log in and log out the user. So I'll just remove the permanent login. So what we'd like to do now is actually submit the page information to the database to get a response. So we want to send off the username and password and see if they exist in our database and return that information back. And if so, remove the log on page and know that they're logged in. Else if it doesn't exist, we then want to tell them to log in again. Now this requires us to have a look at the log on page itself. So I'll just close these ones down. Now this was created in a previous tutorial where we've taken the information from the form, mitigated any injection, and also ensured that they've entered data into the form. We then take that information and place it into the variables. So now what we want to do is process that information. To do that, we need to actually create a session so that we can pass data between forms. Now remember, starting a session allows us to create server-side variables. We also need to make a connection to the database. Now I've already got a functions PHP code written. We've made this in another tutorial. I'll put a link in the comments below. But in the function connection, you've actually got the database information. You've also got the PDO. We're using PDO connection, not SQLI connection. And also we've got a catch in here in case there is an error with the connection to the database. Now we need to be able to talk to this file, so we actually need to include this into our database. So I've included the PDO connection in functions. Now once we've included the function, we then need to connect to the database. Now I'm gonna store the connection to the database in a variable called DB. Now, once I've included the function and the connection, I can then write my SQL. 
Now the best place to write the SQL is actually after we've authenticated that the variables being passed in are not empty. So we've collected the information from the form, we've prepared the data input, and we're ready now to build our SQL query. Now we're going to collect our information from select username and password. These are the two fields that we want returned. And we're going to store it in a variable called dollar sign SQL. Now we're also going to build our SQL string. So we're going to have select from where, and then you can have ordered by, group by, etc. So the next thing we need to identify is the actual table. So we want to select username and password. In the database, there is a table called LDAP. Now there is a tutorial on my YouTube channel you can have a look at if you want to know how to build databases in PHP My Admin. And you'll notice that we're concatenating this string onto the previous string. So it's going to select username, password, make sure you've got a space on the end, from LDAP. Now a where clause is very important because where username, which is this field here from our database, is equal to dollar sign user underscore name, which is the variable that's here that we've got from the post username, which is from the form. So we take the data that vented in the form and we process that through this field name here. And password is also done the same way where the password's picked up from here, processed and presented here for the query. We've also used the end clause because both have to be correct. This and this needs to exist for it to be true. If they get the username right, but the password wrong, it will not return a result. So you must use the end statement and not the or statement. Now we can group by order by, but this SQL query does not require that. So once we've built our SQL query, we then need to run our query. Now to run the query using the PDO method, we're gonna go DB query SQL. So it's best to read it right to left rather than left to right. So take our SQL string, query that using DB, the PDO connection to our database, and when you get any results or responses, store that in results. So it's much easier to read this from right to left than left to right. Now, if they have got the username and password correct, it's going to return some rows within the database. So what we want to be able to do is actually count the number of rows returned. So if there is no response, no returned rows, then we get zero, which means wrong username or password. But if they do get it correct, if there is a response, we want to count the number of responses. In reality, we should only get one response, but if we take the results and then row count, so count the number of rows returned, because each individual response will be in a row, whatever that count is, zero or one, then that answer will be stored in count results. What we can do now is actually check to see if this is working. So what I'd like to do is actually echo out how many results we get back from our query. So I've just created a simple output of an echo. We have the number of results and then a bit of a space so we can see it on our screen. So let's save and check our programming so far. When I refresh the page now, you notice there's no responses at the moment. I'm gonna put in a correct username and a correct password. And you can see up the top, we have one result. Now, if I enter in the wrong username and password, you see we have zero results. So we're actually sending a request to the database and getting a response from the database. Now what I'd like to do is do something with that flag. Therefore, I wanna be able to log the user in like we did earlier and have this information here disappear. So we know this line of code's working, so I'm just gonna comment this out. And then we're gonna work with the response from the database. So I'm gonna create a session flag for the user logged in. And also I would like to collect their name in the session so I can personalize the website. Now I only wanna do this if the result is greater than zero. So it's gotta be greater than or equal to one because otherwise I'll be collecting information on an empty return. So it's best to use an if statement. And also we're gonna be using the else clause for if they haven't logged on. So if the count results here is greater than or equal to one, so there is some return from the database for data matches, then we wanna turn the session the logged in to one. Also, I wanna collect the username, so I'm gonna create a new session variable. And I'm gonna call this variable username. And I'm gonna let that equal to 
the username that the user passed in from the form because we know this has been authenticated because the results has been returned. And if the result is greater than or equal to one, what I would like to do then is redirect back to the page with the user being logged in and stop running any more scripts. So you can have a look on my YouTube channel for the redirect tutorial, but this will redirect them back to index.php, the original page, and refresh the content that's on there. But if the result is not greater than one or greater than or equal to one, so they didn't log on, we can then give the user a new message. So we can tell the user that the user not found or wrong username or password. So let's have a look at this in action. So you can see at the moment that the user not found, wrong username, password. So enter in a correct one. You'll notice we've now logged on. If we enter in an incorrect one, you can see the user not found, wrong username and password. So if I log on again with the wrong one, it stays. If I log on with the correct one, it then identifies that we're logged on. So I hope you found this tutorial useful, creating a logon script. There was a lot to this tutorial where we improved the session script, looking at logged in and logged out by using the isset command. We also updated our index.php page to ensure that we're able to see the logon and logout form. We updated the index.php page. We created a connection to our database. We stored the connection to our database. We created an SQL query for logging on. We ran the query. We also used the count function to check the number of results from the database. Depending on the number of results, we either logged the user in or we gave them some feedback that they need to try again. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, give it a like. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel and have a look around for other useful PHP tutorials. Also check the comments for links to other useful tutorials and also have a look for dynamic websites playlist on my channel.